Greetings, and welcome to EHA Unplugged, the official podcast channel of the European Hematology Association, EHA. Hello, I am Isabel Olivera, a medical writer for the European Hematology Association, EHA. And welcome to this podcast on the latest developments of CAR T therapy. I have the pleasure to have here with me today Professor Mikael Udesek. Welcome, Professor. Thank you for having me. Can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Michael Hudecek. I'm a, a clinician scientist. Um, I come from Germany and I have been involved in the CAR T cell field for more than a decade. So I started um, right at the time when the first uh, clinical reports on, on CD19 CAR T cells were published. This is where I spent um, time in the lab, actually in Seattle, and I also helped to develop uh, CD19 CAR T um, products and, and CAR constructs that are actually now clinically approved and that are on the market. So I've seen the entire development of a car from the bench to the clinic, but also to the market. And this is uh, the spectrum that I'm also covering now in my uh, research uh, lab. So I run um, a whole program in, in cellular immunotherapy at the University of Würzburg, uh, Germany. And we cover a spectrum from target discovery, technology development, all the way to clinical translation into uh, academic CAR-T trials, but also a transfer uh, to biotech. Thank you for sharing today your expertise with us. Mm -hmm. So we want to take, talk about the latest developments. What do you find more exciting? What are the latest things that are going to come um, for the benefits of patients? Mm -hmm. And so currently, um, the, there's many uh, exciting developments in the field of, of CAR T cell, but also uh, more generally in the field of gene engineered immune cell um, therapy. First, um, with uh, CAR T cell products that are now approved and uh, that are applied in many patients, we're now seeing what is called real world experience. So larger numbers of patients are being treated, so we better understand how uh, these treatments work and whether there are correlatives and whether there are parameters that we can even identify before the treatment in order to predict um, whether um, a response will happen, whether that response will be durable, and whether the treatment will be well tolerated. This is also an area where um, all this field of artificial intelligence is coming in because for AI you need a lot of data, well curated data, and this is what the real world experience for thousands of patients who are being treated can now provide. And these um, insights are informing our development of the next generation of CAR-T therapies that we have in the lab. Another exciting um, and interesting uh, development is that we have new indications for CAR-T cells. So far, we focused on acute B-cell leukemia, B-cell lymphoma, and multiple myeloma. And of course, there is the desire to bring this therapy to new types of cancer in the hematology space, we're looking at acute myeloid leukemia and there's interesting targets. Um, we're also uh, tapping into the space of uh, T-cell leukemia and lymphoma. And there's uh, exciting developments in the field of oncology as we're learning how CAR T-cells can work in solid tumors and um, whether this treatment can be a standalone or whether we do combinations with uh, other immunotherapy modalities or other types of, of treatments. Important insights have also been derived into toxicities of CAR T cell therapy. Now that there is longer follow-up, that more patients have been treated, we understand that uh, cytopenias um, may be due to the inflammation that happens in the bone marrow when the CAR T cells do their job um, are emerging. And we have now learned to classify these, to predict these, and to, we are refining strategies um, to bring patients through this period of cytopenia. The concerning um, finding has been um, genotoxicity. So uh, a recent observation now that thousands of patients have been treated with CAR T cells is that in very, very, still very rare uh, cases, there can be uh, malignant transformation in the development of T cell lymphoma out of the CAR T cells. Um, it's a rare event, but it's important to understand it in order to further refine our genetic engineering strategies both for the gene transfer that we do with the CAR, but also for gene editing that we're now introducing into many advanced CAR-T products in order um, to edit or eliminate genes that we think 
are negative for the function of the salt product um, or that uh, affect their ability for long-term persistence, for example. But this um, uh, is an important field because it also paves the way into um, a key question that the field is, is concerned about. And this is all this uh, question about how can we make this treatment more accessible? Um, can we uh, do highly automated, highly scaled manufacturing of car products possible? Can we reduce the manufacturing time? Can we do this at the point of care at the hospital in order to facilitate logistics? Um, and can we eventually work to a point where we do um, next to the bedside production of cell products or even in vivo gene transfer, where we don't have to manipulate immune cells outside the body, but can rather administer the vector suitably formulated to the patient so that the immune cell product then forms in the patient. But this requires um, good knowledge and excellent understanding of um, also the uh, genotoxicity in order to make an adequate risk-benefit assessment. So this is the perfect example of a personalized medicine. You have mm. to do, these CAR-T cells are made for each patient every time. Mm. Um, how, what are the advances on trying to make cells that would be an off-the-shelf treatment? Mm. So not having to take the patient's cells every time, so to shorten cost, uh, well, well, to reduce cost and to shorten the time mm. between, yeah. Um, yeah, for treatment. Yeah. So what are the developments on that, uh, mm -hmm. on that side? Yeah. So this, there's a strong desire in the field uh, to mm -hmm. make this treatment more accessible and also to make it more affordable. Mm -hmm. And as you pointed out, uh, this is a highly... Uh, personalized treatment because the patient's own immune cells are then gene modified with the CAR and re-administered. So a first and very intuitive um, approach that is being pursued in the field is to take immune cells from a suitable uh, healthy donor, uh, make the product, um, freeze it down, and put it on the shelf so that it is available on demand when the patient needs it. This um, uh, is being pursued by several academic investigators, also companies now. And there's first um, clinical data showing that this works. It's also clear though that there is an immunological barrier. So these allogeneic immune cells are ultimately uh, being rejected. So the therapeutic window uh, that is resulting is shorter than with an autologous cell product. And for some indications and clinical situations, this can be fine. When it's about bridging a patient to a transplant or when there is a setting of minimal residual disease, for example, it can be fine to have a shorter therapeutic window where the cell product then acts on eliminating these resid residual leukemic or tumor cells. Mm -hmm. If you're combating a high amount of tumor cells and when you need a durable response, then this therapeutic window though may be too short. And this is why um, an alternative approach that is being pursued in the field is to still work with the autologous cells, but to really um, expedite the manufacturing. And there is now evidence and, and data for cells that have been produced in as short as 24 hours. Um, and of course, to scale up the manufacturing such that it is high, you know, done in automated devices so that many products can be uh, manufactured in parallel in, in a GMP clean room suite then that you ultimately move to the in vivo gene transfer. This would be probably be the highest uh, scalability you can, you can achieve. Um, another interesting avenue that is being pursued, and this is then getting at the question, are these T cells and immune cells from a patient equally fit as the immune cells from a healthy donor that has not gone through any prior treatment and potentially chemotherapy? So there's this whole field of trying to do advanced genetic engineering and equipping these T cells and other immune cells with transcription factors, for example, that instruct the cells to execute a certain genetic program that make them believe that they are young and fit and that they acquire superpowers and functions. So this is an interesting avenue um, that has uh, tremendous effects on uh, the performance of these cell products. And I think personally, that uh, we would see more autologous products that are manufactured in, in a rapid fashion and that are equipped with superpowers um, rather than allergenic uh, cell products because the immune barrier is difficult to overcome. 
Are there strategies to remove the tissue markers that make it um, that to, induce the immune and the induce yeah. in the immune response? Yeah. Absolutely. So um, the the field of gene editing and, and the CRISPR technology uh, have allowed the um, editing of of those loci that uh, code for the histocompatibility antigens, mm -hmm. HLA class one and class two, and this has been pursued. Um, it's multiple gene loci though that have to be edited mm -hmm. in order to really eliminate um, all these markers. This again leads us to the question of genomic safety. Um, it also, and this is then a fine line, um, if, if your immune cells don't have HLA markers anymore, they would be prone to a natural killer cell attack, actually, because lack of HLA is also then a hallmark of, of cancer cells. Um, this can be addressed by expressing HLA E or G um, in order to kind of find that uh, sweet spot where the cells are not immunogenic or have reduced immunogenicity now still not being recognized by innate immune cells. Mm -hmm. But this requires then really advanced genetic engineering, um, which again adds then complexity to providing these cell products. Mm -hmm. So with these gene engineered cell products, um, uh, more intense release testing has to be done in order to allow them being infused in patients. Mm -hmm. And also the scalability then is reduced because um, the, um, also doing all these uh, CRISPR gene edits, for example, um, is toxic to the T cells and reduces the yield that you ultimately get out. So it's an interesting field. Um, there's also um, clinical data showing that this can work. Um, still, it's uh, such a fine line that you have to hit that personally, I think working with autologous uh, cells would be my preference and really working on um, increasing the performance and fitness and expediting expediting the manufacturing such that essentially you can, you can still do this in a personalized way. Do you think that all these different approaches will have different applications? Will this all lead to therapies? Um, maybe it will be again a personalized therapy, but not only because you take the patient cells, but because the approach you take to target uh, the cancer will be different, molecularly speaking, yeah. every time? So I do think so that we will see variations, right? Mm -hmm. And as we just discussed, the spectrum of autologous, mm -hmm. autologous modified mm -hmm. with a transcription factor, allogeneic, mm -hmm. allogeneic gene edited, um, and not just focusing on T cells, but also mm -hmm. considering other immune cells, natural killer cells, macrophages, or combinations thereof. So I think it offers an exciting spectrum from which um, a particular embodiment will probably be selected also mm -hmm. for different types of cancer or mm -hmm. also now in non-malignant diseases like autoimmune, cardiovascular, neurological diseases where we see applications of engineered immune cell therapy. This is why also from a terminology point, we're now going from pure CAR T cell therapy mm -hmm. to gene engineered immune cell therapy, mm -hmm. just to describe that broader spectrum. And your point is right. Um, I do think that we will see different embodiments in different types of uh, diseases. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on the type of disease, mm -hmm. um, um, the extent of disease and the nature of that disease, mm -hmm. we see we will see different uh, immune cell products um, being kind of the winner that in the end um, will be effective in, in the clinic and that will be used by, by clinicians and demanded by patients. So the future is looking bright, no? There are, the future is looking bright. There are For many now, yeah. possibilities <laughs> so, on the, yeah. on, mm. in development mm -hmm. that will mm -hmm. bring, um, yes, many other um, ways of fighting all these hematological malignancies. And beyond, um, right? All the spectrum already, of yeah. uh, solid tumors, uh, autoimmune, as, as we said, there's mm -hmm. exciting examples also in, in, in the cardiovascular disease space. Mm -hmm. um, where engineered immune cell therapies uh, can be effective and can provide a benefit to the patients. Mm -hmm. So we are recording this at the CAR-T meeting mm -hmm. in Valencia in mm -hmm. 2024. Mm -hmm. um, is there something specific that you have seen here that is exciting that you think is worth highlighting? We have an exciting program here in Valencia. Um, and of course, there is the kind of the backbone of, of the meeting is the update, the clinical updates on how the, the CAR T cell therapies um, are performing. Now that uh, larger numbers of patients are being treated with acute leukemia 
with uh, lymphoma, with multiple myeloma, and to see that there is indeed patients that have a long-term benefit. And this is really reassuring and also really encouraging for the field that this can indeed lead to long-term cure and that the patients want these treatments. So I think this is um, uh, first an important message uh, from this meeting. Second, I think there's so um, many exciting developments in such excellent science now going on in so many laboratories in Europe, um, but also um, with our colleagues um, outside Europe, in the United States, and in other places, that I think this um, field has, is really developing rapidly and um, has also manifested itself as, as an important um, part of, of medical research now. Um, it is interesting and to see um, new frontiers for CAR T-cells. We will hear about uh, the experience in autoimmune disease um, with uh, cell products that have actually been repurposed. Right, So we're using CD19 CAR T-cells now to treat um, um, autoimmune diseases that are mediated by uh, autoantibodies and, and targeting the CD19 and potentially uh, BCMA can lead to elimination of B cells that produce autoantibodies. This is very exciting to see. Um, and at the same time, um, uh, the session on new frontiers where it's, um, it's about allergenic cell products, um, gene edited cell products, but also um, cell products um, that are xenolytic. So they, they address uh, cells in the body that are um, exhausted or termin terminally differentiated such um, that is the opportunity for rejuvenation, for example. And that can be an, an exciting application in the field of regenerative medicine. So this is the spectrum that we're covering. Um, this is um, really uh, encouraging to see. Um, and importantly, also the, the spectrum of attendance that, that we have. We have, of course, experienced clinicians. We have junior clinicians that present clinical cases that they've seen on the clinical service. Um, we see uh, scientists at all levels of the training, um, nurses, um, pharmacists, um, industry representatives, and importantly also patients. And we're proud that the patients have their patient forum where they tell us about their experience and how it was to, to receive CAR-T therapy and what we can do better um, when we um, um, accompany patients through this journey and when we explain this treatment to them. So that's, that's an exciting package here in Valencia. Thank you very much for this insightful conversation and special really thank you to you, Professor Udecek, for generously giving your time and your expertise. And thank you all for listening. Thank you for having me. My pleasure.